Hey guys, Ghostboy Ghoul here. Just within the last couple hours, I was able to beat Sephiroth Crash 2, which I have put over 15 hours into this fight alone. Um, five the first night, uh, about six the second, and uh, just over four and a half hours today before I was able to beat it. Now, I wasn't able to beat it on my own, and I don't think I would have been. It has been uh, probably the toughest battle I've beaten so far. Um, so I just want to give a shout out to the people who came around my chat and uh, messaged me on Discord uh, that helped refine my team and put it together for the team that it was uh, that beat it. And uh, those those people are um, Solid Snake 1994, thank you. Dragon TC once again, thank you. Uh, GNP the Gamer, thank you. Jmu 94, I appreciate you. Uh, Tarkinson, Axes on Fire, we're both there. Not the day I beat it, but the previous day helping out. And last but not, especially not least, Unstoppable Chaos probably gave the most help. Um, not only messaging me on Discord between my streams about team ideas, what I could do, but uh, was also there for both days while I was streaming. The first day that I put five hours on two was on my own. I wasn't streaming that. But let me go over a couple teams that I was using in the first place that didn't work out for me because I still have them saved. And then I'll show you the team that worked. And then I'm just going to show you guys a recording while I talk over it from when I actually streamed and beat it on Twitch. So we're gonna start with Seth Crash. This is the first three teams, two or three teams I'm gonna show you. I was getting quite, pretty far, but I did not beat it. So this is the first team that I was trying a lot. Um, I was trying to break his Masamune in waiting phase, the Diamond Sigils with Tifa here. Well, also she was being a secondary healer and she was pump, Aerith was pumping out both um, <clears throat> magic and physical defense whenever I needed it, and doing being the main healer, and Sephiroth was my only DPS. I uh, got Sephiroth quite far to red health f uh, several times, but I wasn't able to get past his consistent Octo Slashes at the end with this setup. The next one I, I was using, which I would not have used Matt if it wasn't for ideas from the community, but they brought it to my attention that he would be a good idea to use, and I used a couple different Matt teams. I didn't get. I got this healer outfit for him specifically for this, um, while I was on stream trying to boost his heals and stuff. Uh, but I had a secondary healer, but only single target. That was Matt. Magic defense up here. He was breaking sigils with Killer Hornet, and uh, and both of these guys were pretty well the same. And then the the third team I was trying here was pretty much the same, except as a secondary healer instead of the magic defense. Um, now keep in mind those three teams did not work out for me. The team that worked out for me, which still took several hours of attempts before I beat it, it was pain, was this. I had Chaos name here for Unstoppable Chaos because this was really what he put together in the end with me. Except I did have a few tweaks of my own, like Garnet's Rod here was mine. She needed HP and her, she, Aerith was really not damaging people strong enough. She was not strong enough to do much damage, so she was given Sephiroth Magic Attack instead. Now, let me go over them one by one here. I'll show you the stats and everything as I usually do. And if I go too quick, you could just pause on anything that you'd like to see. But these are the stats for the Sephiroth that pulled it off. Um, I'll, just, I'll show you the R abilities. He maxed out Magic Attack, had seven level 7 Ice Potency... A bit more attack, a bit def a bit of defense, and a bit of HP here. And it took some fine-tuning with the materials before I got everything, right? Like, I didn't need a D-Brave. Uh, Sephiroth is immune to pretty well any debuff, but I was using it because he needed that little bit of defense, especially the magic defense is what he really needed, and it gave him some HP too, and all of this was used. All of this was used, and that's why he had the D-Brave. He wasn't going to use a Fire Blow. But it gave him 19 physical defense, some more magic attack, some more HP. The survivability was necessary. And the X Sigil, um, of course, that's getting the Sigil boost. So that was totally worth it uh, because of the, both of Sephiroth's Sigil phases that needed to break. You needed to put the X on somebody and add a nice 6.9% magic attack with some defenses and HP here for survivability. So that was a great material to have. Um, of course, you see Edged Wings OB10 and uh, Torn Wing plus 11 because I've been playing since day one. So I got this back on the first uh, Sephiroth event and was able to get it to plus 11 because of the second uh, that's still on today. And this 
high potency on second cast. It brings the physical defense of somebody up. So that was really good too. Another suggestion was somebody else could have had like a decent barrier if the stats on it were good. And they could cast a barrier. And then Sephiroth could cast um, Torn Wing Solid Barrier. And that would bring you to high tier as well. Um, with just one cast of a Solid Barrier. But that's an option. And then... Uh, he had Snowflake OP6 for the magic attack ice potency. Uh, Yuffie's new pinwheel weapon. Yeah, you know, just called pinwheel. For some HP and ice potency. I think that's the only uh, ice potency weapon that has HP on it. Um, let's see here. Yeah, it's the only... So, so that new weapon came in handy because I needed a little bit more HP while still giving DPS. And then HP and defense from Hellhose. I think uh, yeah, I just hit the next HP tier with that. And I just hit the next ice tier with that. So that was perfect for me. Uh, I've got an HP and physical defense um, from Hellhose weapon on everybody, I think. Next up, we've got Aerith. Um, how many heal HP did everyone have? 9,000, 8.3, 8.3. Holy moly. She's up here at 2,400 heals. Uh, oh yeah, and some of my the other builds, I was using some Wind Attack for Sephiroth's first uh, Sigil Break phase. I did not use that for my the team that won. Um, I just it just did not did not work with my team. But she needed the HP here. That's the main reason this was here. But it ended up coming in handy a few times during the fight. You'll see where I do buff uh, Sephiroth up for um, when he uses his summon, and he he gets a few Aerial Frost Blades buffed out of it too. Why not, right? A, f a few runs that I did that I failed on with the team that won. I was trying to buff Cloud with magic attack too, even though he doesn't use magic attack, for Ifrit's Hellfire. That was working out for good damage too, but it wasn't necessary for the uh, for the battle that got me there. Now, let's see here. Um, she had this on just because physical defense, 17, 8.6% heal, that's huge. This was unnecessary. And 2.7% uh, HP for survivability. So that's why she had that there. Her Kira. More heal. More physical defense. Bit of magic attack. Which wasn't really needed. Physical attack. Not needed. But the physical defense and the heal are the main reason that Kira was there. And the circle sigil. Of course, we needed a circle, a triangle, and an X. One for each person. But this worked out better on uh, Aerith. Because it gave 15 physical defense. A little bit of heal. And uh, this wasn't necessary, but it was there too. Um, as for her R abilities, you'll see the sub weapons. I'll show you. It's just the three, three ones. But uh, she hits tier seven with heal. That can go higher, but that's where she hit. Uh, magic defense, unnecessary earth resistance. Resistance. That's just from uh, fairy tale. Not needed, but you gotta have it for fair with have with fairy tale. It just comes with it. HP, unneeded. Physical defense. And then all free weapons here. All free weapons. Chocobo staff, pumpkin stuff. Both of these were from Halloween. And uh, that's recent from the recent Sephiroth event. Feather Scatter. Cloud. Lots of stats. Lots of stats here. Um, Sky Splitter for fire damage. And the Bandage Sword was absolutely net absolutely necessary i wasn't using magic defense up in my previous teams that were getting pretty far but just wasn't enough i was more so relying on double healer and i was only really i wasn't really using my mithril rod to block um sephiroth's aoe magic attack hit i was more so using it uh for his octo slashes the physical attack hit so but once i had the magic defense up for the magic AoE hit. I didn't need to heal as much, therefore I didn't need two healers. That's what the community really was really trying to get through my uh, fix call for a while, and I was a little bit of stubborn about that. But in the end, it, it pulled through. It worked out. The bandage sword was absolutely necessary. I guess you could run Matt if he's strong enough to um, with core defender, but that wasn't really working out for me when I was trying that either. Um, he only uses the triangle sigil here. Um, I put it here for the physical attack bonus. There it is. Uh, but for, as for the fire, 
Got some um, physical attack, magic defense, and HP out of this. I think he was dying at one point, so the magic defense and the HP was absolutely necessary. Here, the triangle ruiner blow is one of my best physical attack hits with uh, for physical percent. It does 5.1, but that's one of my best ones. And he had the magic defense here, so that really helped him out. And uh, this was never used, but it's got the good physical attack, and it's got uh, physical defense, which he needed too. For some equipment, I was bringing my fire potency quite high here with uh, an already OB9 boomerang. I was, I mean, I was trying to get it, I guess, when I was pulling for it, but I pulled too many of them um, in the uh, the Yuffie weapon pool for 2,000 red crystals. You guys saw what I did in the previous video if you watched that. I got pretty far with boomerang there, but I have pulled more since. Uh, prototype Crimson Blade I was going for and I was on Sephiroth's Fire Banner. It was my wish list and I got it pretty far. And of course the Hellhouse Cannon. So I've got one of the Hellhouse weapons on each person for HP and physical defense. So we hit se tier 7 for physical attack. Of course we get this from his outfit. Tier 7 Fire Potency. Very nice. Uh, HP. A little bit of attack, a little bit of defense. So yeah, that's the team. Um, I'm gonna show you guys what I did so uh yeah <clears throat> enjoy okay start this out making uh Sephiroth aerial frostblade and Cloud uses blazing strike and I uh, just pool ATB with air. I just save all the ATB. Sometimes if I don't make Cloud and Sephiroth uh, attack, they won't because they're going to wait for their stance. Um, they won't do it automatically. Their AI is dumb. So. Now I jump back and forth making them Aerial Frostblade and Blazing Strike as soon as they can. While Aerith uh, gets enough to use Kiraga all. As soon as they hit enough ATB to do their attacks, I do them. Uh, Cloud gets one Blazing Strike in and then uses his MP up. Uh, sorry, Magic Defense up from Bandage Sword. Oh. Uh, as you can see, I'm be behind myself there in the recording. That's because I'm just going to talk over my uh, my video from when I was streaming on Twitch a bit ago. So I start this fight off with um, an area of Frostblade from Sephiroth and a Blazing Strike from Cloud. If I don't do them manually, they might not do them automatically because their AI is dumb. And Aerith just pulls ATV. She just sits on her ATV, lets it get to full because she's going to need it all <clears throat> for here. We switch to Kiraga Alls. Uh, Cloud gets one Blazing Strike in. Yep, I waited for the attack stance to get the full. Don't need to do that though. Sephiroth gets Narrow Frostblade in. After Cloud's got that in and he gets five more ATB back. He did it himself there, perfect. He gets a Sanctuary in. Aerith gets another Kiraga All in. And they all take a big hit but survive. Next uh, minute or so, Aerith is just going to be healing pretty well strictly until everyone's at full health. While Cloud and Sephiroth strictly just attack. That is until Sephiroth's first phase of uh, Octoslash comes in. I pause here to talk to someone in my chat. Sorry, I paused there to talk to someone in my chat, I guess. That's okay. Um, Aerial Frostblade and Blazing Strike. Kiragas, as mentioned. Uh, they... Cl 
Cloud and Sephiroth will hit the Sigils. Aerith is just using um, base Ruinra, not really just breaking one Sigil at a time at the maximum magic attack she can, which isn't much. Uh, as you've seen, she does not have any magic attack buff, like, um, stat-wise, so. She's strictly support. Cloud and Sephiroth continue to hit hard, both physically and magically. Well, um, Aerith stays on the Kiragas. And is this when I start using Healing Pulse? No. Okay. I'm just being safe with the heals there. Sephiroth got uh, his Diamond Dust ready. Cloud is getting his Hellfire. And I gave Sephiroth one healing pulse from a magic attack buff before launching the summons. I think I hit around 77,000. I always hit uh, around there. 72 to 77,000 usually. 74,000. That's not bad. And now Octo Slash is coming, so Sephiroth's getting the solid barriers in. I think he gets two of them to, for max defense. He doesn't need uh, to get it up by three tiers. You only need the two most of the time, but um, that did it for me, so that's nice. Alright, here now we use the Circle Sigils rather than the uh, Base Ruinra. We just gotta break them. Uh, Sephiroth has got the X Sigil on his edged wing, so that breaks a little quicker than the other two. And if you've got a stronger Marisame Cloud with Lightning, uh, that's got the Triangle slot, I think, on the last slot in the, in the East Cloud. So, I mean, that could work if your uh, Lightning Cloud is better. But, uh. Alright. They're going in. We're all fully healed now. So now I have uh, a chance to use a bit of ATB with Aerith on something else. Uh, Healing Pulse giving Sephiroth more magic attack is basically Aerith's DPS because, I mean, the difference in damage that Sephiroth does from not having the buff to having the buff is going to be more than Aerith would do if she was pumping out her Ruin Rest because she's too weak. She's all support. Uh, Sephiroth is clearly targeting uh, Cloud here. So... I went into defense and got some solid barriers in on him, actually up to three tiers, so I got two in on him, that's nice. Air did a single target Kira, gotta love that. Blazing Strike, Aerial Frostblade, I'm jumping around like a madman here. Heartless Angel, don't need to worry about heals, so I use Healing Pulse to grab uh, some magic attack up, and I launch my summons. Sephiroth targeted Aerith for that. She's going to get some Kira's in. Single target will heal more than the AoE. Oh man, this fight was so such a pain. I'm so glad it's over. Uh, solid barrier, nice. <clears throat> Got the cures in. Oh, and the reason I haven't been using healing in there is because I'm saving it for after the um, <clears throat> Masamune and waiting phase. Where you have to break the diamond sigils. Because uh, right after that, he uses his AoE magic attack. So I have to have uh, full health and be able to do the magic defense buff up with Cloud's bandaged sword. Um, so the healing one will help me get there, only having one healer. Masamune in waiting. Break the sigils as quick as I can. We were pooling ATB before that. We were saving ATB a bit. Because we knew this was coming. 
And now I use the Kira or uh, Kiraga all. Now Healing Wind, I do need to. I think we're gonna get an oh Healing Pulse. That was risky of me. Oh, I see why because I'm gonna launch the summons. I, I wanted to launch them ASAP, right? So I'm getting another one in. Wow, I'm really being risky there. Okay. Not too bad, not too bad. Big hits, big hits. We've got the high fire potency on Cloud and the high ice potency on Sephiroth, so... Not doing too shabby. Sephiroth didn't have a defense buff here and survived. I was pretty stoked and yeah, I guess I'm not smiling anymore about the time I'm showing you, but had a big smile on my face there. Uh, let's see. Got the Kira in on Sephiroth. He was losing the most health there. I hit defense stance just in time to take the Hell's Gate hit. Back to attack, ready for Masamune and waiting. Is that what he does? Oh, yeah, he does. All right. And we break him again. We don't let him get away with that. Kiraga alls. We've got our summons coming up. They are charging pretty fast. We knew... Uh, oh, I was anticipating his AoE uh, magic attack hit, but it's just Heartless Angel. So I saw that. I'm like, okay, I got some time to buff and stuff right now. And that was a little risky too, because sitting on Earth's ATB and having it full for this heal here is probably the smarter move. So I was a little, um, I made a lot of mistakes up to this point where I finally beat it. So, um, luckily that wasn't one of them. Uh, Cloud's getting <clears throat> bandaged sword move in. Aerith is getting a heal. Cloud got another bandaged sword, uh... Buff in. That's three magic attack up. And we just hit full health just in time. I'm stoked. And look, look at me go. Look at me go. Pretty happy there. <laughs> yeah. Let's get my facial expressions. <laughs> Move out of the way so you can see me. We get... Uh, the magic attack buff in, and it's just a DPS race from here. Diamond Dust. And here's where we attack. I didn't even bother with a Ruin Rock because I know it's pointless. She does like less than a thousand damage some of the hits. Got a magic attack buff on Aerith for... I mean, on Sephiroth for a hit with Aerith. Oh, Sephiroth lives! And he's the one who just got the buff, too. That's nice. We got two two buffs. A heartless Angel? That wouldn't even kill him anyways. It would bring him to 1 HP. I was so happy here. Yeah! Let's go! Oh my gosh. That's all... That was a lot of, uh... Weight lifted off my shoulders beating that. Holy moly. I think I go through and I put my title on my uh, profile, so I'll stick around for that. Planet Leader. Pretty badass. New record. Of course, of course. I still can't believe I beat it. After putting like over 15 hours into this fight, like five a day for, uh, and this is my third five hour session pretty much. I, uh, I really didn't think I could beat it, but you know, after some help from the community and tweaking my teams around and slowly but surely we made it. So, uh, there we are. Yeah, I'm pretty soaked with all that. Um, let's jump forward a bit there. Mm. 
blue crystals, nice. Jump forward a bit here. I had the chosen one on my profile there from uh, beating the crash co-op. Thanks to Tix, 6 i 9 uh, He helped carry me through that, so. Planet's Leader. It shows up in both the first and the last slot, which is nice. So you can place it in either one. I wish more of them did it, did it that way. But, you know, these uh, hard-earned ones. Is fine to put it in both places. That's cool. I like that. Remarkable Planet's Leader with the Trickster badge from getting 100 Trickster and co ops. Remarkable is from getting 5 or 30 Fantasistas. I think it was just 5 Fantasistas and co ops. That one was tough too. Uh, Planet's Leader from be beating Seth Crash Co op 2. The Red Banner um, from beating the most recent ranked dungeon event in Mount Nibel. And uh, look how much and many gacha tickets I have saved up at this point. I am going to drop uh, quite a bit of those brown ones for Yuffie, but I think I am saving my 4 star and 5 star ones for whatever Vincent drops, probably in a few months. Um, we've still got Kate Sith and possibly Sid to come first, but Vincent might come before Sid. It all depends. We'll see. Because in the original game, we see Vincent in Nibelheim before we recruit Sid in the original game. However, this game has confirmed that uh, Dirge of Cerberus, the story for Vincent, Vincent's story, which takes place three years after the events of Final Fantasy VII, and one year after uh, the events of Advent Children, um, like, that is going to be a story in this game. So I think that Vincent might come out either with that or after Sid, you know what? I don't know. He'll probably still come before Sid because he shows up with the story. Um, I don't know. You tell me when you think it's going to release. Anyways, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. If the video helped you out, uh, throw me a like. Throw me a comment of anything you want. If you if you need help, um, <laughs> this fight has stressed me out a lot. You know, I can give you my two cents, but there are uh, other people in other discords that <laughs> might give you better advice than I could. You know, I, uh, the community really carried me with their words here through this, and it, it took a lot. It took a lot out of me to try to beat this, and, uh, I'm, I'm glad it's off my chest, or the weight's off my shoulders, I mean. Anyways, dang, this fight was tough. Um, throw me a like, throw me a subscription on YouTube. I do make Ever Crisis content. I try, like, maybe once every week or two to put out a new video. I don't put everything out, out there, but, uh, and it's not always consistent, but when I can make something and throw it out i will um i also stream on twitch like you've seen this clip was that i was just looking at was from twitch so check out in in the description of this video i'm gonna have a link to that throw me a follow over there too i'd really appreciate it and uh thanks guys hope you all have a great day take care